welcome back. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Da na na da da da. All right, y'all. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is the Strategy Snacks podcast, hosted by yours truly, Sean Marcano. I am a designer. I am a UX designer, uh, brand strategist, creative strategist, whatever you want to consider me. Um, my main focus uh, as a designer is really to uh, help businesses uh, grow. And not only that, but um, to inspire and help others to learn about design and educate them through what I do. So welcome back to my podcast. It has been a long, long time. I remember I was looking through some of my files and uh, last time I recorded was, I think, uh, maybe like 2019, last fall, maybe or summer or something, sometime like that. Uh, but I forgot to like keep up with it and long story short was that uh, well fuck it I'm back I'm back and I'm here and then I'm recording a new episode and I have a bunch of content loaded on the way and so that's what really matters um, so I'm keeping the same layout so basically the same thing um, I'm gonna be giving out strategy snacks after each uh, episode and so for those who are listening for the first time or who have never heard about what I do, that's perfectly fine because I am a new podcast and that's okay. Um, so at the end of each podcast, a strategy snack will be dropped, uh, whether one or two tips of advice uh, that I feel is significant, that is a key takeaway um, that not only like a small business owner or a designer should take away or any entrepreneur that's out there, something to take away and to apply to your own uh, business practices. Um, life, career, however you want to apply it, or even pass it on to somebody else. Uh, so that's really the emphasis of the strategy snack. So the same layout in that sense. Um, the other thing as well is that I will be still doing conducting interviews, um, still be interviewing other people and, and I, like I have before. And uh, thanks to Kyle, who I got to interview on episode seven. Um, so I have to catch up with him. If you guys want to check that out, episode seven, um, you're going to see it on all podcast platforms. Uh, through Spotify, iTunes, um, iHeartMedia, so on and so forth, Google, Stitcher, everything. Um, so yeah, same layout. Another thing I want to get to is um, it's still strategy snacks. Like I'm still, it's the same thing, same shit, just some minor tweaks. All right. Uh, so my direction of my goal, I, I really wanted to pivot this new uh, layout and this new platform of mine, um, really to focus on a couple things. So. I will, I want to get to 100 episodes. Like, that's my big goal. Um, we will be conducting our own talks. So I would love to get hired or picked up for some uh, uh, design leadership talks. I would love that if that occurred. Um, so, Figma, Envision, um, Adobe, if you're listening, I do want to speak to you. And if you're out there and you're listening, uh, reach out to me. And that's in the show notes. You can check that down below. Uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so let's get right into it. So coming up soon, October 13th will be the Adobe event and it's going to be, um, I have it up here, right here. Yeah. So, uh, the new Apple event, it'll be considered to be called high speed. Um, so I think the biggest thing that might be coming from this is obviously the phone. We're going to be talking about the phone and I think they will be talking a lot about 5g and what they're capable of doing with 5g so i'm very very excited for that um so we seen last month they showed us uh stuff with ipad um mac pretty much all the devices um the wireless charging was going to be a big thing um and i'm excited for what that is like i actually have to i have to buy one of those um or apple send one please thank you uh <laughs> but um People, everybody's excited about that new iPhone, and I'm excited as well. Not only as a designer, but as a UX designer, and I will discuss discuss that a bit more um, as we get later into the episode. But um, I'm excited for that as a UI UX designer, and that's going to be pretty fun um, to design some new experiences and what 5G is capable of doing for businesses um, and apps and applications when it comes to like VR, and um, that's going to be pretty fun. So keep your eyes open for that. Now, what I'm also seeing is that, uh, and I want to talk more about that high speed. Um, I think that's going to be a big thing. And we're going to talk about like why it's important for business owners and entrepreneurs to pay attention to this new technology. And the reason I'm talking about this is because 
how you use technology is really going to influence um, and impact like your business, right? Uh, think about how Wi-Fi and the development of Wi-Fi and 4G, let's just say 4G and Wi-Fi, right? Uh, two different times, but let's talk about Wi-Fi. And how Wi-Fi really impacted businesses. Um, you're able to access millions of people in seconds, right? You're able to, they're able to see what you're about, what you offer anywhere in the world. Um, and then the possibilities of networking um, that can happen not only amongst yourself to others, but what people can do for you and market your business uh, in that aspect. And so that experience is going to be pretty fun, uh, considering that 5G can technically have like almost zero lag and whatever claims they talk about. Um, so please keep a lookout for that as well. Um, so yeah, so from the graphic and how it looks like, um, it's like a couple circles, like rings and rings and rings. Um, something has to do, I believe, to my knowledge about spatial using like space and the environment, the space around you. Um, so there's a lot of wearables that they have. Uh, so I'm kind of excited to what that could possibly mean for us and the, what they're offering to us with the phone and the watch and what's capable, you know, what, what you're able to do with that kind of stuff, right? Like if you use the watch and like you're playing, I have the watch right here. If you're, if you use the watch, you can calculate any kind of exercise that you're doing based on your movement, your, the data they collect from you, from your heart, all kinds of shit like that. And so that's going to be pretty cool to see how they take advantage of maybe space. Um, and what that means for us uh, and what it could possibly mean for you and your business um, or you as a designer and what kind of experiences you can create for other people um, using space. So think about that. Now, I'm glad that I brought that up right right now because there's something else i want to discuss is like how can you as a business owner or as a designer uh do the right thing for your users your customers your clients and um so yeah so doing the right thing and i wanted to bring up a story about like have a checkout a bad checkout experience that i had recently um ordering a pair of sneakers and someone posted it up on social media i think it was like instagram or something like that and I'm clicking through, and it's like, click on the bio. All right, click on the bio. After I click on the bio, oh, actually, it was a, it was a shirt. It was actually a shirt. So they're like, they posted it up, click on the bio. All right, everybody has a little link right in the bio. I'm clicking it, go to the website. All right, I'm trying to check out. I pick my size. I'm a large. If you want to buy me a shirt, send me a shirt. I'm a large. So I'm clicking large, about to order it. And I don't know. Next thing I know, it's like in my cart, but then telling me to check out. So I'm like, okay, I'm, let's go check out. So I'm checking out, and then it makes me put a list of information of shit that I'm sure they don't even need. Um, and then from there, it goes into another page of information I have to put in. And then I'm like, all right, yo, I just want to check out. I just want to get the shirt. Just in and out. And that's why I love this new thing of, uh, if you've probably seen it, if you ordered so many clothes or food or anything, like the Apple Buy or Google Payout. Uh, PayPal like buttons like that that just makes it real quick to order and pay for your stuff uh, If you are a business owner, please, 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 please implement these things Because putting in 10 15 fields of information just to check out and order something that's like 30 40 like come on man Like that's it's unnecessary. If you don't need to have it um, Make it quick make it simple and that goes for anything within your business the checkout portion if, the, if it's a fast checkout the more money and come into your pocket as fast as possible. Um, please, 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 please make that faster, way faster. I hate fucking trying to check out on something or even experiencing something in your site. And it's like, yo, I, like, how do I get out of this? Or even like, for example, the newsletter stuff. Sometimes people or put or people putting, let's talk about the newsletter. I'm talking about paywall in a second, but like newsletters, people try to force you to subscribe to newsletters. And then you're sending me 10 emails by 9 a.m. It's been one day since I've been in your newsletter and you sent me 10 emails. Stop. Why Why do you need to send me that, many, that amount, amount of emails, right? It's a pain in the ass. Um, the other thing is not just new newsletters, but these paywalls. I think Quora does it, the New York Times or some shit like that. And don't get me wrong. I guess it, I get it. People put on like ad blockers and try to block ads because that's where they make their money and uh, ads. You need a, engagement and awareness and all kinds of nonsense, right? But it's it's annoying, man. Like it's it's really annoying how I need to go through a paywall in order to read information. Example: Quora has a lot of information I would like to see. 
I can't access Quora if it's behind a paywall and I can't see it. I'm definitely not subscribing. I'm not paying, nor am I making an account in order to No, I'm not doing that. Um, Glassdoor kind of is annoying with that stuff too, but it's not a paywall. It's just to like join the account, make an account and check it out. Um, but yeah, please guys, if you guys are operating sites. If you have working with somebody that's making a website, make it easy and accessible and provide as much as information as you possibly can uh, without putting stuff behind a paywall so that it's easier for people to access. Please, please do that. Um, not only for it, I'm explaining why it does that, but the reason why I say to do that is because the better experience that someone has at your, let's say, store or your website or your platform, the more that they're going to want to repeat that same action and access what it is that you offer. Um, given that it's given something as like a difficult experience to um, work with or access, um, people just don't want to use that platform uh, and step away from it. And, and it's kind of noticeable. Think about the apps that you have on your phone and what apps that you use on a day-to-day -day basis and why is it that you use those apps, right? You use the apps that are, uh, most accessible are fun to use nice. They look pleasing like, you know stuff like that if they look horrible You know old and from the 2000s um, chances are you're gonna delete those apps because they're just horrible to use um, And they don't follow like new design trends and uh, shit like that Okay So yeah um, Again following the same format as I've once done before uh, we will be interviewing people uh, So I'll be trying to provide as much information as I possibly can not only for me I understand it's just my voice on this platform, my voice on this podcast, uh, but I will try to um, bring, pardon me, I will try to bring um, as many guests as I possibly can so that you guys can not only learn from them, but um, yeah, you won't have to just hear my voice and have be able to hear some other uh, other people on this, uh, on this podcast. Uh, yeah, so what I've also done is instead of using the old webcam that I used to have, Got a new camera, so if I look clearer, hopefully it looks better. Um, it's because of that, and I'm super glad for that. So shout out to Amanda for selling that to me. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. It has been fun to use and experiment. Went straight to Best Buy and bought some wires so I could hook it up to my computer, and that's been a fun experience. So appreciate that. So the important part of this podcast, Strategy Snacks, is the tagline, uh, bridging the gap between the user experience and the brand. And that's important because um, without people, without users, without customers, without clients, there is no brand. And each part of those um, experiences or what you considered a per, you know, a person within this, this realm, um, there's no business and you need them in order to survive. So they go hand in hand. And oftentimes that brand is also a user of another business or another brand and so on and so forth. So that's kind of like how that chain continues. Um, and I, I would want to enter into this space uh, and well, re-enter because I've been here, but uh, finally voicing my story and uh, my opinions and my thoughts into this platform because um, it's, it's important that people not only see someone like them speaking on things that may be important to them, um, or could help them out or to benefit them. But as well as like, um, there hasn't been a podcast that I've seen that discusses uh, that connect and that gap. Now, given that uh, you may perhaps own a business or have some sort of, let's say a friend or a person you might know that owns a business, um, take into consideration some of these questions, right? How can we bridge that gap between my brand and the people that I serve, my users? How can I better that user experience? Um, ask yourself some questions such as, uh, what am I doing to help best serve them, right? Uh, what am I doing for them that's not only beneficial? You may know what you might want to help them out with, but they themselves may not know what you even offer to help them, right? And so, Sometimes I'm not saying that users are dumb because that's not what you would want to say, but uh, users don't know what they need help with sometimes. Um, and so you may have to explain to them even further or make it evident, make it crystal clear. Like, this is what I do. This is how I can help you. And this is how I can best serve you. Um, and so when people see things like that, that are very straightforward and very clear to understand, 
um it closes a lot of empty holes in statements uh so that when people come to like understanding well like okay i know somebody that does x i know somebody that does y i know somebody that does z so that they can then become a person that can advocate for your business and your brand and your and you know that kind of like cycle continues and and here are other people that would be advocates and uh such for your own business now um to get to uh today's strategy snacks i do want to start off by saying um today is two strategy snacks uh that's for one and lastly um i do want to bring up i hate adobe because they continue keep mess they mess up my license I hate them i'm just kidding i don't hate you please offer whatever you want to offer so using your software uh, but yeah, for today's strategy snacks, um, I want to suggest something to the entrepreneurs out there. Uh, no matter what it is that you do, interview the people you sell to. Uh, this goes on to the point that I was saying previously, interview the people that you sell to, whether it's something completely random, you sold, let's say you sold 25 things, right? Let's 50, hundred, no matter what it is, pick random people, send out a personalized email to each and every single one of those people and ask them for feedback. Hey, what do you do like about this? How did you enjoy that experience? How could this experience be better for you? Um, from the moment you entered to the site, did you know what you wanted to purchase? Um, questions like these can not only do a number of things for your clients and your users, um, but ask them such as like, um, you know, how could I better serve you uh, next time around? Pardon me. Because these things show that not only you care, you have empathy for the people that you want to serve, um, but it also can help you make your business better in the long term, in the long run. Um, and who else wouldn't enjoy a business if you, let's say, purchase a shirt from, I don't know, Old Navy or something of that nature, um, you know, wherever, Gucci, Louis, whatever you shop at, and they reach out to you specifically to know what it is that you want it. Uh, and how what your feedback and making sure that that feedback matters, not just some generalized uh, email that's saying from a one to five, leave feedback, right? Something that's a bit more personalized because um, this can go a very long way. And just try it out. Try it out. Pick 10 people, 10 random people. You scroll down the list. Boom. I want you. I seen you purchase this. Let me write you a personalized email and you can even copy and paste it, but make it somewhat personal so that you can then, you know, change everything, you know, speak, speak to them in, in a person to person kind of way. Right. Um, if you're serving over 10,000 people monthly, I get it. You might not be able to do that, but if you're a much more smaller business where you may be serving less than a thousand people a month, um, boom, that can make a big difference and it can help you scale your business. Now that leads me to my next point is take advantage of tools out there. Um, and test and analyze stuff uh, that goes very very far if you don't know how that's okay And that's perfectly fine um, But see what it is where you host your website if you don't have a website try to get a website But if you do have a website see if there are any analytical tools um, Google Analytics has a bunch um, I use WordPress personally and I have my own analytics on the back end uh, And I also use some advanced analytics uh, that I use from some plugins that help me host um, not only not host my website, but as well as get some information not for the podcast, uh, but for my website in general. So I can see where people were clicking through uh, what episodes they listened to, like all kinds of information so that when you have more information on your side, you're better equipped to make better decisions for your business. Um, if you're noticing that maybe like this blog post that you created and written and out um, hasn't received a lot of like love and you didn't get the amount of shares or likes or etc. Right. Um, potentially that can be some sort of feedback and you can take that to then. OK, well, what isn't working about this um, and try to make those changes so that you can make better decisions or design decisions for your business. Now, I know this podcast episode was dedicated a lot the entrepreneur, small business owners. Um, if you feel as a designer, that's not beneficial to you. Take a step back and see yourself from the feet of the people that you would like to serve. And now in the other way around, if you're a business owner, or entrepreneur, see yourself in the way that you would like to serve others. Um, 
and serve your users and how users per perhaps might see you um, as a entrepreneur, um, CEO, you know, whatever it is that you call or consider yourself. Um, I hope I was able to provide as much value as I possibly can on this episode. And I promise the next episodes will be longer. Uh, but I just wanted to let this out. So I would let you guys know that um, there is a lot more on the way, a lot more people to speak to, um, which I hope you guys are excited for. And there are um, more new links for the podcast. Uh, so if you want to check out the Twitter at Strat Snacks Pod, that's on Twitter. Uh, I'm not going to be doing Instagram for the podcast just yet. That'll be just my personal social media and that can be in the show notes below i am changing it so yeah put it in the show notes below and you can see that um or check out shawmarcano.com which you can see everything and that's gonna have everything that i possibly do all linked kind of together um there is merch so keep your eyes out for that and there is a clothing line that i am dropping rivalco.com so if you would like to check that out i will be kind of having some stuff on uh, from the clothing line throughout my episodes. So if you want to check that out, feel free to check out rivalco.com. That is the link. So it's R Y V I L co.com. And um, what else am I leaving out? Uh, hold at recording. Um, what else am I leaving out? Oh, uh, there will be merch for this podcast on shamarcom.com. Um, slash strategy snacks and I'm yo what's going on um, I will be leaving some information there so if you want to check out shawmarcano.com feel free to visit um, I'll make sure everything is connected and if you have any questions that you would like to reach out or would like to be checked out you know be put on the podcast or would like to learn more or would like me to talk or discuss any topics feel free to reach out at smarcano10 at gmail.com um, or leave a DM at Strats Next Pod, um, and I'll get back to you as quick as I possibly can. Trust me, I'm not doing much, but working, 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 working. All right, so thank you guys for checking out the strategy. Set. Thank you again for checking out the Strategy Snacks podcast. Um, feel free to subscribe to the YouTube. Please check that out. Subscribe to the YouTube. Um, subscribe on all platforms: Spotify, Apple, iHeart, wherever you check this out. This is Sean. I'm out of here. Take care, y'all.